all of the pharmaceutical grade nandrolone decanoate is an erogenous oil. So while you might try to prevent hair loss or other side effects associated with testosterone, you might induce cardiovascular disease with prolonged erogenous oil exposure when you're one of the unfortunate ones that doesn't respond well to erogenous oil and gets into this tremendous inflammatory state for the entire duration that you're running these pharmaceuticals. Welcome to Vigorous Performance Enhancing Drugs. I'm Coach Steve. Let's discuss the carrier oils of all, yes all, the pharmaceutical grade oil-based anabolic androgenic steroids which are out there. Now unfortunately I wasn't able to piece together all of the excipients used in pharmaceutical testosterone or testosterone derivatives, or at least the ones that we use in bodybuilding or for general hormone replacement therapy purposes. Still, this list is pretty complete and pretty extensive, but some of the manufacturers, they don't list which excipients or carrier oils that are within their oil-based products. It's not on the website, it's not on the insert, which comes along with every pharmaceutical, and it's not on the product packaging either. Or, you know, the website, the insert, or the packaging is not in English, and I wasn't able to translate it. So what I'll do at the end of this video, I'll list all the pharmaceuticals with unknown excipients. And if you do know which excipients are within, please let me know in the comment section and I will update the corresponding article which comes along with this YouTube video. I'll link it down below, right next to the timestamps. You can find it on vigorousteve.com. And I'll update it there. So the list becomes even more complete than it already is. Now, I'm only going to limit the pharmaceuticals to the ones that are listed on drugs.com. Drugs.com is a very extensive database of FDA-approved pharmaceuticals worldwide. So if it's not on drugs.com, I don't consider those products to be pharmaceutical great. And I'm sure some of you are going to ask me down below in the comment section, what about brand so-and-so? What about carrier oil so-and-so? Just keep in mind that YouTube is not for source checks and not a source board. So let me give you a fair warning. If you start asking me down below in the comment section, I will block you and I will add that particular brand to the spam filter. Just be warned. So I will answer you this. What about tea oil or peach oil? Not being used by pharmaceutical grade companies and all the blood work that I've seen so far keeping in mind that, you know, the companies that use tea or peach oil have a lot of counterfeits out there. All the blood work that I've seen, tea oil and peach oil also increase systemic inflammation, and you can see that on your high-sensitivity C-reactive protein test for the guys that are diligent enough to do their blood work frequently. So let me answer that question for you right here. No. I don't think the tea oil or peach oil is a suitable carrier oil. And let me give you guys a little bit of a heads up. If a particular brand has an anti-counterfeit system in place, where you can go to the website and check if the serial number is actually in their database, and they say it's a legitimate product, none of the pharmaceutical grade companies, which are FDA approved, use a system like that because medicines go through a normal route from manufacturer to somebody who needs it medically. And they don't need to put an anti-counterfeit system in place to ensure that the product is legitimate. So I don't really care if the brand has pharma or pharmaceutical within their brand name. An anti-counterfeit system, by definition, means it's not pharmaceutical grade. So with that out of the way, I'll list the dynamic viscosity ratings of organic carrier oils used by pharmaceuticals right here on the screen. So you guys can see why certain thicker carrier oils are being used for esters with a longer half-life. And when we're done with this video, I'm sure you will see a trend that particular carrier oils are used for particular esters. So now you understand that the pharmaceutical industry has already got this thing figured out and you don't need to mess with synthetic carrier oils or, you know, carrier oils like tea or peach oil. Again, 
there's a reason why these Keter oils are being used for particular esters. So hopefully you'll understand by the end of this video that it's better to stick with those which are used in medical settings. So let's start with castor oil, my favorite catheter oil. And even though it has a very high dynamic viscosity rating, it's basically thick AF and takes forever to inject. One milliliter of castor oil might take a couple minutes to administer, but once it's administered, there's no post-injection pain and leads to very stable serum concentrations because castor oil takes a couple days to metabolize from the injection depot. It might take up to 34 days for it to completely absorb and release the active pharmaceutical ingredient. So you also have to be patient when you're waiting for the results to manifest. Because again, it takes a little bit longer to absorb. But once it's absorbed and serum concentrations reach their peak, you get very good results on bi-weekly administrations. And I would prefer that over daily administrations with a comparable dose of testosterone in another category of oils. Because, you know, poking two holes in your body versus poking holes in your body every day, I would go with bi-weekly administrations. So, the pharmaceuticals which produce in castor oil are Bayer Germany. They produce Testifier and Dite Depot, Primotestin Depot, Rimabolin and Nebido in castor oil. Endo Pharmaceuticals, which is an American-Irish company, produces their Nebido in castor oil. Norma Hellas SA from Greece testosterone enanthate in castor oil, and Rotex Medica Germany, also testosterone enanthate in castor oil. So you see that testosterone enanthate and testosterone endecinate, or the methanolone enanthate primobolin, the enanthate and the endecinate, these pharmaceutical companies decide to put those esters in castor oil. Another very good category oil is cottonseed oil, which is pretty much interchangeable with grapeseed oil. But as far as I know, grapeseed oil is not being used by pharmaceutical grade companies to suspend their anabolic androgenic steroids in. But cottonseed oil is. Now, if you find an underground lab that produces in grapeseed oil, Coach Steve would approve, considering there's no ethyl oleate or another solvent contained within so grapeseed oil, I, um, yeah, it's got my seal of approval. But cottonseed oil at least is FDA approved and it's contained within the following products. Activist USA, American Regent USA, Cipla Pharmaceuticals India, Padlock Laboratories, also known as Perigro USA, Pfizer Hospira USA, Rising Pharmaceuticals USA, Sun Pharma, INDS USA, and Wilshire Pharmaceuticals USA all produce testosterone cypionate in cottonseed oil. You see a trend there? Cottonseed oil and testosterone cypionate, best friends. Now, Pfizer Pharmacia and Upjohn USA also produces testosterone enanthate in cottonseed oil. Then that's the only pharmaceutical grade testosterone enanthate within cottonseed oil. Everything else is testosterone cypionate. Sesame oil is also used by pharmaceutical manufacturers. Sesame oil used to be very popular in the underground lab scene in Europe. I'm not really sure if they still use sesame oil nowadays because I left a while ago and I don't really keep tabs of <laughs> what's going on regarding the underground lab scene in Europe. The following manufacturers use sesame oil in their products. Baus Health Companies Inc., also known as Valiant Pharmaceuticals. Testosterone cypionate is in sesame oil. Disma Healthcare, also known as Laboratorio Pharmaceutico, SIT from Italy. They produce Testovis and Testex, which is testosterone propionate in sesame oil. And their Testex Prolongatum, testosterone cypionate, also in sesame oil. Hikma Pharmaceutica, not to be mistaken with something that is produced in China. Don't ask me in the comment section, I will block you. Hikma Pharmaceutica, also known as Westward Pharmaceuticals from the United Kingdom. Their testosterone enanthate and testosterone cypionate is in sesame oil. And, you know, probably the best test sip you can find. Watson Laboratories, also known as Elegon. Elog Elorgon PLC from the United States also produces in sesame oil. 
Now, olive oil is um, being used, but it's only by two companies. Galineka from Serbia produces their testosterone depot, testosterone inotate in olive oil. And Q Pharma Spain uses olive oil for their testex prolongatum, but they combine that with ethyl oleate. Now, for the guys that know and been following me for a while, ethyl oleate is not Coach Steve approved, even though they still use it in some of the FDA approved products which are found in Asia. I'm not going to mention them by name because of the defamation laws, um, but ethyl oleate, even though it's FDA approved in some countries, I don't consider that to be Coach Steve approved, considering all the blood work that I've seen and, uh, you know, moderately to uh, extensively high elevated, high sensitivity C-reactive protein levels. Con- uh, contributing to cardiovascular disease over prolonged exposure. So, Q Pharma Spain, you're off the list. And while we're on the subject of systemic inflammation and uh, elevated high sensitivity C reactive protein levels on your blood work, let's discuss Arach's oil, which is refined peanut oil, which somehow passed FDA approval, but it still causes tremendous inflammation. Not with everybody, some people can you know, handle their Arach's oil quite well, and it doesn't raise their high-sensitivity C-reactive protein levels. But most of the people that I've seen that, you know, use Arach's oil, yeah, systemic inflammation goes up, and I wouldn't see that as a suitable approach for long-term use. The following pharmaceuticals produce in Arach's oil. Aspen, Aspen Pharmacare South Africa, their Sustanon 250 and their Decadurabolin is in Arach's oil. Jelfa Pharma from Poland, Testosteronum Prolongatum, Testosterone Entate, Arach's Oil, Merck Sharp Dome or Dome from the United States, Decadura Bolin, Norma Hellas SA from Greece, Nandrolone Decanoate, Nexus Pharmaceuticals USA, Genosteron, Testosterone Entate, Organon, the Netherlands, Sustanon 250, and Decadurabolin. And Cytus Kadila Healthcare India, also testosterone depot or testosterone enantate. All of these products are, are Arachis oil, so you see a little bit of a trend that the Sustanon 250 and uh, Nandrolone Decanoate are all suspended in Arachis oil, which is a little bit unfortunate for the guys that run uh, Nandrolone only cycles to prevent hair loss, uh, gynecomastia, and acne. All of the pharmaceutical grade Nandrolone decanoate is an Arachis oil. So while you might try to prevent hair loss or other side effects associated with testosterone, you might induce cardiovascular disease with prolonged Arachis oil exposure when you're one of the unfortunate ones that doesn't respond well to Arachis oil and gets into this tremendous inflammatory state for the entire duration that you're running these pharmaceuticals. So please keep that in mind. Just because it's pharmaceutical grade doesn't mean you can't get systemic inflammation. And it might be better to go with the Nandrolone decanoate from an underground lab that is reputable that produces in cottonseed or grapeseed or MCT, which is also Coach Steve approved. I never saw any systemic inflammation from MCT oil. Micleol 817 or 814, I've still seen uh, systemic inflammation. So refined MCT or coconut oil is not approved but regular good old MCT oil that you would use for cooking, hopefully it's USP grade and not cooking grade, Um, that's Coach Steve approved and uh, you would still need daily administrations because MCT oil absorbs from the injection depot very, very rapidly. So even though you're taking a testosterone and decanate in MCT oil, you would still need daily administrations because it absorbs so rapidly. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there's a couple brands which doesn't mention their excipients and Keter oils that they used to produce their products. Abure in Iran produces testosterone enantate in unknown Keter oils. Caspian Tamin from Iran produces Androne testosterone enantate and Nandrodec, which is a Nandrolone phenylpropionate in unknown Keter oils. Pharmac Ukraine or Pharmac Ukraine produces testosterone propionate, unknown carrier oils, 
and Joffman Pharmaceuticals, Pakistan, testosterone intake in unknown carrier oils. So if you live in any of these countries and you can uh, read the website in its native language, or you somehow know which carrier oils are contained within these products, please let me know down below in the comment section and I will update the article which comes along with this YouTube video. So let's summarize a little bit. Castor oil favors the anatate and undecuinate esters. Cottonseed oil favors the cypionate ester. And arachis oil doesn't really favor anything because there's so many esters that can be suspended in arachis oil. Whether that's anatate, isocoprionate, phenylpropionate, propionate, deca decanoate or undecuinate. It can all be suspended in arachis oil. And maybe that's because it has some solvent-like properties allowing for basically any ester that's FDA approved to be suspended in arachis oil. I could explain why, you know, some people get tremendous systemic inflammation and elevated C-reactive protein concentrations in the bloodstream. So personally, I would stay clear from arachis oil because I do get an adverse reaction. I notice it in post-injection pain. And of course, when I do my blood work, the uh, CRP is elevated. So please keep that in mind. Now, etholiate, again, it's FDA approved in some countries, but it's a synthetic carrier oil. And I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, C-reactive protein elevation on etholiate. So I don't consider that to be a sustainable approach. So again, I would stay clear. Yeah, that's my personal decision to stay clear of etholiate and everything else that, um, you know, causes, uh, mo even, even if it's mild elevations in C-reactive protein levels. I would stay clear because cardiovascular disease is no joke. And I really hope that helps, guys. Thank you so much for watching. You can find the corresponding article down below, the direct link close to the timestamps. I would highly advise you to read that article in depth so you can uh, make a healthy decision on which products you want to use in the future. If you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology, you can find the ebooks on my website, vigorsteve.com slash shop. If you're looking for personalized advice, you can find the rates to my services in the services section and contact me directly through the contact form. Follow me on Instagram at vigorsteve. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.